People have asked, can, can you get addicted to this? Well, people can get addicted to anything. Like you can get addicted to working out or eating right. good or, you know. Guilty. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I just saw your, I just saw your- Look at the, hor the horrible side off. effects on you, yeah. Tom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> riddled so, with them. You know, you can get addicted to anything. And I, I think that there's healthy addictions to good things that help you. And there's bad addictions to things that hurt you and throw you out of balance mm. and Enough. ruin yeah. your body. And so my yeah. thought is, look, Maybe yeah, the, best comparison, yeah. the, the best comparison could be like TikTok or, or, or like Facebook or social media, except you're not just glued to your phone, staring at your phone all day, doing our technology. You click play and then you go about your regular life, which I right. love. Hey, Earthlings. Thanks so much for tuning back in for part two of our conversation with Scott Donald and his happy device company, Mood, incredible weird device. Uh, once again, thanks for listening. This is part two of a nice long conversation that just went everywhere and hit some really meaningful points and lots of fun information. So we're going to pick it up where we left off and find out if Tom actually kept his balls. Another huge application for our technology is in the veterinary space. So think of it called yeah. yeah. no, yeah, dogs and cats freaking out. Oh my God, yeah. Because I had a dog yeah. that was a nightmare to train. If I could have calmed him down. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a so huge imagine thing. Imagine that. So like a muscle relax, like if it's a yippy dog or a, an achy old dog, like we what could were you training, Tom? Him. What were you training your dog to do? Well, he was a beagle and I couldn't get him to stay. Oh he, yeah. He I'm just sure. wanted to run because they got like a, a mad scent thing where they just run off. <laughs> and I was running around Crystal Palace Park in London chasing <laughs> this bloody dog. I was like, it feels something. I was looking into all those like zap colours and I was like, I can't do that. I can't like zap yeah. a dog. No way. I can't do it. But I was like running myself ragged, man, trying to train this dog. So if I could have got something at the time to just calm him color. down. Yeah. Pop well, I the... ended up chopping his balls off the poor oh, fella. Oh, you, put... you should have zapped him first. You put those on his collar? <laughs> yeah, it was my dad. My dad said to me, it was like, he, he had the same experience, right? My dad took this dog for a walk and the dog ran off. He thought he could train it, you know, being my dad. And then he walks back to my house, gets in. It looks like he's gone through a bush, my dad. And he goes, get that dog's balls off. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why you're so well behaved, oh, Tom. This was your influence. Exactly, in yeah. oh, I've been a eunuch since I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was just throwing around the threat <laughs> at dinner time. Do you want your balls like off? We actually, you, you guys would love our animal, our first animal studies on mice. Um, we can't tell everything that happened, but we basically tried these signals and animals don't have a placebo. Animals are animals. They don't even know yeah. they're getting into it. So <laughs> it was unbelievable. We have video of this, of literally the mice on the sleepy signal, literally curled up into a ball, passed out in the corner in like clusters of five. And then you oh. have the alert, the alert signal, um, jumpy mice grooming each other nonstop and eating like crazy eating, same time of day, same mice, same everything against the control group. You can literally see hyperactivity, hypoactivity. We did the uh, relax, what? We did the relax signal and the lab techs literal on camera, her words are, and it's a third party CRO in San Diego. We don't, this is an outside third party group. She looks at the, she goes, these mice, look at their arms and legs. They were completely splayed out, like flat on the floor. <laughs> and she goes, I've never seen a mouse do that. Ever. <laughs> this is a sign of extreme muscle relaxation. And we were sitting there Mike like walking money. over camera. <laughs> You'd be rich. You'd be on to an absolute <laughs> winner. Go on. So what was the next bit? You saying well, I, I won't tell you all the other ones, but yeah, we, we made them we made them woozy and hyperactive and somnolescent and hyperactive. It was pretty it cool. Like so just tell me this roundabout. <laughs> Scott, is there is there an, is there a I don't want to say the word danger really, but is there a, a world here where this could become too addictive? in that it becomes addictive to use it and then you can't actually access these things by yourself to just be able to, I want to relax, yeah. I'm just going to go do some heavy breathing. And is it meditation, you know, is it too, our ability yeah. to actually do or, or, something? Or, or, yeah, or it's like sort of, we rely on it too much. Isn't, you know? isn't enough, like in its absence, yeah. Right, so I think, you know, that's a great question. Um, the main thing that we want to do is help people just feel better throughout the day. Now, these are subtle, right? Like you're not actually like hijacking somebody's emotions forever. It's not like coming off of the Adderall that you were talking about earlier. There's, there's no toxicological side effects. And so 
basically it's just a subtle feeling. And then once you turn the signal off about 15 minutes later to 15 to 20 minutes later, you're back to base. Oh, right. back. Also in fairness, like if I did feel that happy that I referred to before, I wouldn't be reaching for my happy thing. You know, I wouldn't be reaching right. for my device. It's not as if I think, I think like, it's not as if people will be trying desperately to amplify good emotions and therefore those emotions will become inferior. I think yeah. Yeah, it's more like this is my routine in my day. Now I could do with feeling <laughs> like yeah. really just blowing off the steam, like well, people's lives, yeah. you know, they work and they go home. Yeah. And it, look, it's, I, you know, people have asked, can, can you get addicted to this? Well, people can get addicted to anything. Like you can get addicted to working out or eating right. good or, you know, guilty. Yeah, there you go. I just saw you. I just saw your look at the horrible side effects on you, yeah. Tom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> riddled so, with them. You know, you can get addicted to anything, and I, I think that there's healthy addictions to good things that help you, and there's bad addictions to things that hurt you and throw you out of balance mm. and Enough. ruin yeah. your body. And so, my yeah. thought is, look, maybe the yeah, best comparison. Yeah, the, the best comparison could be like TikTok or or, or like Facebook or social media, except you're not just glued to your phone, staring at your phone all day doing our technology, you click play, and then you go about your regular life, which I right. love, right? So my thought is, yeah, people would probably build a habit very quickly. We've already seen it. People are building a habit of using this mm. throughout their daily routine. Um, Isn't that on just average, the same as saying that they're out. using it? You know what I mean? Isn't that the same as saying that they are using it? I mean, when does it spill into becoming a habit when they can't do without it or something? Yeah, I guess so. It's like if, if you freak yeah. out, like, you know, if you've got a plane, you're like, oh my God, I haven't got my happy, then that's not good. Yeah. You know, you shouldn't ever right. be in that situation. <laughs> have a panic attack. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, uh, leaving at home after two months. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think for us, you know, we actually have a lot of people, you know, on the flip side, they're like, man, I would love to get on a plane and be able to click relax and just feel more calm. And Without then, having to take sleep like, pills. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're gonna do something, right? We, it's we there to, to be used as a tool, right? It's there it's to be used as a, as a healthy tool. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, going back on the troll side of things here, um, not the trolls in there, but w when we think about technology and like EMF fields and what we didn't know about microwaves and how recent they are and our cell phones and how pervasive Wi-Fi is, we are now realizing how bad these things are for us. It's not common knowledge, but they are. Is there a possibility that these sub-magnetic frequencies that you're talking about might have a dark shadow? Yeah, certainly biology. with excessive use. Yeah, good question. So the the big thing for us is, you know, these guys are doctors and scientists that built this technology. So their biggest thing is first, do no harm. Like that, that's every doctor's credo, right? And so that's why this thing took so many years. I mean, we're 18 years into this technology. They wanted to create a way where we are, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 times less than any sort of, uh, frequency that could potentially be harmful. Like you have a whole spectrum, right? Like you have gamma rays and, uh, you know, even MRI machines, they're actually showing the MRI, uh, MRI machines aren't that bad anymore at all for people, but there are, there's that higher level, right? Mm -hmm. There's even studies of being under power lines too long. Now, then you have like the normal range of 5G and you've got, you know, all this, you know, cellular data, um, a vacuum, a toaster, a microwave, you know, all those kinds of things. And then that's where you start to enter the non-ionizing world, right? Where things aren't penetrating, you know, to a degree. And then you go down to the ultra low frequency, way, 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 way down, about 30,000 times less than any of those appliances. And you've got our technology. Wow. So this, this is actually a big criticism we, we got, which is there's no way at, you know, 20, 20 kilohertz and uh, a little bit of a magnetic field, the 40 milligal magnetic, there's no way you can actually cause a biologic effect. You guys are insane. That's fake. You'd have to like, you'd have well, to- A tuning fork, the same thing. Oh, a tuning fork, yeah. For, for a frequency of, what is the frequency set for? 432 hertz, the frequency of love. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, there you go. That's, but so Scott, come here. Um, you know, those big, evil machines at security at the airport where they um they make you degrade yourself by putting your arms in the air like you're in a like you're in a richard simmons exercise video from 1982 <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah similar to your hat yes. <laughs> yeah. 
Byron, you were so yeah, encouraging like of this chat until the cameras <laughs> rolled. <laughs> but my friend years ago told me because there's radiation on a plane that you're exposed to, that that is another far, far smaller amount of radiation that you're being exposed to by, by saying you'll go into this security thing that does some sort of, not an x-ray, but it kind of, it's x-ray. So I never go through those machines. And the, the, the customs crowd always grumble at me because I, I request a pat down, which to be honest is quite nice anyway. You know, you're in an airport. Free might, massage, uh, mate. Yeah, Take yeah. It. Might as well have someone just give you a good rub. It's, you know, <laughs> you know, you don't have to outwardly enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> but so should, like, do you know about the, where, let's say, the wave technology of those things is on the scale? Yeah. Yeah, good question. So basically, you know, you got to think about it this way. There, the science is still out on 5G and, you know, plane frequencies and all this stuff, right? Like mm. what people don't understand is 5G is a, a, a hundred times more uh, stronger frequency than just 4G was a couple years ago. It's a hundred times more. And there are 10,000 times as many antennas delivering it all around the world, right? Because there's little antennas on top of every little building now for this. And so we don't know for certain what that 5G does long term. Um, you know, I've got a, there's blockers you get for the back of your phones. That's like a really simple insurance policy, right? Um, you never know what it's going to do 20 years down the road. And so if you can put a simple blocker on there, you're, you're good to go. Um, but for us, we're blocker. just, a what? A 5G blocker. Is that what it is? <laughs> like an EMF blocker. Yeah, go to Amazon and just Google EMF blockers. You can get them for like five bucks. And yeah. how big are they? What, what are they, Scott? They're like a little thing. They go in the back of your holder, your, your phone yeah, holder. You can, get, you, you can get a whole case like this that blocks it, um, or you can get little round stickers that you just put on a, a laptop or a, a cell phone. It's just, it's a simple way to have a little insurance policy because you just never know, right? I mean, that people, yeah. said, do those EMF blockers affect the happy device? We have, we have actually, and this is all anecdotal, but if people are using a blocker for their phone and then they do our technology, they feel it better. Mm. You feel it better. Ah. No, yeah. no competing waves. No competing waves. Yeah, because again, this is ultra low technology. I mean, this is one thirty thousandth of what my phone's throwing off. Okay, so we are like in the super, super low range. Um, and, and we've done the 15 day duration studies on animals. We've done six years of studies on humans nonstop using the signal, no adverse events. Wow. So we know we're in the ultra, ultra, ultra low space. But again, it's something that's 30,000 times as much in your pocket 15 hours a day. Yeah. We, just, we, don't, know. we don't know. Hey, right? Scott, do you, think, um, do you think happiness is just frequency inside of a human being? Do you think ultimately oh, is, it, yeah. is it fundamental? I think all emotion is frequency. I, I think, look, I think you are frequency. Mm. Like if you get any electrocardiogram, you, you have an actual megahertz in your body. Mm. You literally do. Flash um, for you. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, yeah. So we're all just kind of waves of frequency sort of floating around, pretending that we're solid. Yeah, yeah. In fact, they've, they've actually done, I don't know if you've heard of AO scanners. Um, no, what's that? An AO scanner and a lot of, actually Dr. Don Woods uh, introduced me to this technology. There's a lot of people in the mental health space who use uh, it's like a Royal Royce machine, AO scanner, basically seeing the frequencies throughout your body that can identify if you're basically healthy or unhealthy in certain aspects. And so wow. the idea is- Like what? Do you know what specifically? Like how can- you know, um, Yeah, so like the, the, the general idea is, you know, we all have a frequency. I mean, literally that's science. That's, that's actually science. If you put yeah, an yeah. electrocardiogram on your heart, it's going to hum at a certain, you know, megahertz. Um, but if you are not looping trauma, if you are eating the right stuff, if you're sleeping, if you're meditating, if you are balanced mentally, your brain and your body can hum at a higher frequency. And what, the, what these scanners are saying is anything over 70, uh, 72 megahertz as an average throughout your body is a healthy level. Um, Interesting. Sickness. Sickness starts to happen around 67 to 68. Colds, flus, more immunocompromised situations. Um, cancer is at 42 megahertz, according to the scanner. Um, death is at 24 megahertz. Like the higher you can hum and your brain, if you, I mean, and this is really, really cool. If you think about it, if you are on 
all firing on all cylinders in your brain and you are not looping trauma and you are meditating correctly and you're not letting stress affect your neuron, your hundred million or hundred trillion neurons throughout your brain, you will hum at a higher megahertz level. Wow. And if you can hum at a higher level, you can actually stave off infection and disease and sickness. So that's what it really is. Your brain is like the software that tells your body, the printer, what to print. And if your brain is not right, if you're not balanced, if you're looping trauma, if you're looping trauma, for instance, from childhood or stress or a divorce or whatever, it's something that fear, like COVID, fear mm. of, a, of a disease, you are actually looping um, mental energy onto a stress-inducing thought. And that is actually keeping your body from being fully functioning. Wow, Absolutely. that's really I mean, powerful stuff. That really rings true. Yeah, it really yeah that's rings. very true. So that's yeah. all that I'm trying to do. And this is this, I'm, these people are coming out of the woodworks, man, because what I just told you a year ago, I thought was the biggest hunk of bullshit that I've ever heard in my life a year ago. Really? Now that I've you done this, these people are coming out of the woodworks and I am seeing like top doctors, top scientists, like PhDs in the, in the brain space, like, like computational mathematic people coming out and being like, oh my gosh, you are putting a, a face to what I've believed forever. Wow. And so yeah. I'm starting to see energy people coming out of nowhere that are like, I know everyone thinks this is crazy because it's Eastern medicine from thousands of years ago, but here's the truth. It actually has a biologic effect on your body to keep yourself in balance. Mm. So if of we can help with does. meditation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if we can help you with meditation, if we can help you with trauma, if we can help you with recovery and not keeping yourself addicted to other things that are gonna hurt your body, oh, it wow. is a massive win. One of the nice things that the old meditation does is that it stops the loop. And I can attest to that to some degree. I've you know, done a, sort of had it in my life for a few years anyway and sort of noticed an internal improvement where you're less dwelling on some bullshit in the past. Oh, the rerun. Mm, yeah. yeah, the rerun. Well, it's, and it's, it's that idea that it... Completely, but it vastly silences things and therefore imprints less negative thoughts. On I think what, one of the things that I've had from meditation and mindfulness is to, to let thoughts come in, but you let them go. So you, you're not having those thoughts affect you in a negative way. So it's like you say, you're stopping the loop, right? So yes, they can come yeah. in, but they have to go. What they don't do go are internally they? in. What good are they? Yeah. Present. What you good are they? Headspace? You guys do Headspace? Yeah, Headspace no, is great. No. So I love Headspace. I mean, it's actually the perfect combo to like Calm app, Headspace. All those things are perfect combos to what we're doing together, mm -hmm. meditation and yoga. But um, in Headspace, they, they literally say, picture yourself on a hill and, and picture your emotions, however you feel about your day, about your life, about this moment. Let those float down the river in front of you. And you're just watching it mm -hmm. peacefully from the hill. And, and it's this almost out of body experience. And that, that is the perfect way to describe. That's the, the high, that's this, yeah, you're the, you're the awareness on the hill. You're not the, you're not the toil in the river. Hey, uh, yeah. Scott, do you have an aura ring on? Is that what I'm noticing? Is that your wedding ring? Uh, yeah, I, this is actually a workout where it's a CrossFit silicone oh, yeah, ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I recognize that. I love Aura. I'm a huge fan. All of my investors and all of our partners use Aura Ring. In fact, what's Aura Ring? Aura Ring is a sleep tracking um, ring that tracks bio data in your body, heart rate, certain uh, monitoring, like so it can check how good of sleep you're having, or focus, or your even. Well, that's a lot more than that, but yeah, it's quite good. Well, I was just wondering about how your how happy was potentially could correlate and work with other technology or tracking to. Custom. Yeah. What's again? Just customization, I suppose. At the end yeah. Of the and so we, Headspace as well. Like, why not integrate it with Headspace? Yeah. That's, yeah, well, that's, yeah. What, that's what we want to do. We want to have these types of partnerships. So we just partnered with the marketing company that took Aura Ring to uh, you know 114 million in the last round. Then now they're our marketing partner. We mm -hmm. have a lot of overlap there. Um, the VR space. We've got some strategic partnerships going on. Um, we've got. I think a big one is going to be like a calm or a headspace partnership because we're not the auto, like what we're doing is inaudible. All I'm doing is magnetic fields to your body to trigger a biologic sensation. But if you could do it with a meditation app or, you know, songs or more, hell, Morgan Freeman's voice, I don't give a crap, like whatever is good. 
Um, it's the voice of God, you know. So. <laughs> yeah. Do you right. know, I, I did a voiceover for this, uh, this, this undersea mission thing quite recently. And they, <laughs> Oliver, the fellow in charge, was like, now the last video, our first ever video, that was voiced by Morgan Freeman. And uh, he, he did it in one take. And then I did it. It like, took me like 13 takes. To get you up for you. He set me up for massive failure. And uh, it, it only prolonged the recording. <laughs> Scott, but when you started, obviously, like I just said, when I looked at the trolls and then I looked at the people backing your product, you know, on your website, um, and which is also how I heard about you. I heard about you through an announcement that Dave Asprey did. I mean, you've got a very impressive list of people. How did you decide to approach these people or they approach you? How did this happen? How did you get so many interesting folks like Joe Polish, who's, you know, a marketing guru, you know? Yeah. You can be a bit, His yeah. name is Joe annoying. Polish. I know, and he had a flooring yeah. company. Yeah. Uh, I love Joe. That's Joe's really become funny. a very, very close friend of mine since this all started. Um, so I was in um, a, co a company called Strategic Coach. It's like a coaching organization for entrepreneurs. And this opportunity came to launch Happy and immediately the founder of the entire thing, his name is Dan Sullivan. He's like one of the best uh, executive coaches on earth. He coaches Tony Robbins and, you know, Diamantis and all these guys. Okay. He's a stud and he's my coach. He basically looked at this technology and he said, oh my gosh, this thing is electricity. This is going to revolutionize how we do life just like electricity did 150 years ago. Mm -hmm. People who think and meditate and, and go about their daily life and unwind from work and travel and, and, and do video games, they're all going to gravitate towards this. He said, it's a self-selling product. If I wear this thing and I have the response and I have this logo glowing, it breathes yeah, by yeah. the way, playing it. Every five seconds, it breathes in and out. So you know, you're, it's on. He said, it's going to sell mean, itself. How do you mean? What does it go? <gasps> <gasps> no, <laughs> it visually breathes. Sorry. The, the logo. <laughs> dims. It, yeah. yeah. Paul says, just so you know, it's there. So, so anyway, he basically <laughs> said, he said, first of all, you need a bodyguard. And second of all, I have people for you to talk to. And he introduced me to Joe Polish. And a Joe's bodyguard. Did, did, did Dan Sullivan actually try the product as well? Or just kind of heard your proposal? But when he first, when he first told me about it, he hadn't tried it yet because we were just in the initial phases. Since then, all of them have done this. Mm -hmm. All these people have done this. Why um, would your bodyguard, you're... <laughs> So well, that doesn't encourage the right kind of thinking, doesn't it? No, does it? Kind of You're definitely going to get attacked. Uh, You've think, <laughs> discovered something. Okay, so, that, so I get it. Good networking. Uh, Matt Stan, yeah. founder of High Times but Magazine. I, I will say this. The, because we got Joe, Joe and his team were like, man, this is just so powerful. And he, he got involved because he's got addiction recovery, genius recovery. Mm -hmm. So he's got genius network and all this podcast and he's famous. But he also has a huge nonprofit to help people with addiction. Yes. And his immediate thought was, this is perfect for people in recovery. This is yeah. going to be the great balancing effect for people. Yeah. And yeah. that's yeah. why he joined. And then he introduced me to Dave Asprey. And we became fast friends after he tried the alert signal and then the pick me up and everything else. And he beat it up with his team. And once we got the green light there, Jim Quick and got involved. And, you know, all these random people, the founder of Indiegogo now is loves our product and is helping. And mm. so all these different people join, right? What's Indiegogo again? What's that? They it's like a, like a crowdfunding. Oh, yeah. yeah. crowdfunding. Yeah, yeah, you you yeah, pre-sell yeah. long oh, products. Hey, so Matt Stang, yeah. founder of High Times Magazine, is one of the people on here as an investor. Yeah, yeah so Matt's, are you, Matt's are, a great guy. Are you working on actual cannabis sensations? Um, it's in the works, potentially in the future. Um, Listen, I believe it when I feel it. All right. <laughs> Do you know what? Okay. Yeah, I mean, if, if anyone can crack it, you Scott, can, Scott. And I think they've made a lot of money in Japan in certain vending machines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah be, sure. Is that what you're yeah, referring yeah. to? Oh, but, also, <laughs> but I euphemized it. You said it out loud. <laughs> but uh, tuna brine, apparently. That's what they use. Tuna brine. I, um, I won't <laughs> tell you guys all of what, what's in our labs right now. Um, but we've got some really interesting things that we're testing as we speak. You so, mucky pup. Wow. I bet it's uh, all full of your, your dirty undies and your gym socks and your this swabs from your all sorts of crevices. You know, Scott, as well, it'd be great to get you back on when we've tried yeah. the happy, you know, and we talk about our own experiences of it because... Or yeah. do it well, while I mean, we're we, on. We, we missed the opportunity because uh, Tom was supposed to be out in Seattle for a Comic-Con and yeah. arranged for him and to try the and 
And then the corona interrupted that event. It happened, yeah. They cancelled that event literally like three days before the event itself. And it was when all hell broke loose. It was when Trump announced the travel ban and yeah. everything oh shut down. Yeah. So I, I would have got to try and report well, back on it. We, why don't we do it on the podcast? If we do a second episode with Scott, we can all get super cool together, man. Yeah, do it. I mean, it takes a, the first time you do it. I mean, so here's what we're finding. If people do meditation, if they are healthier, you know, uh, they will most likely, biohackers feel it faster, right? Like Dave, it hit him in 30 seconds. It's one of the fastest I've ever seen. Um, most of those types of people, it's going to be under five minutes, you know, for the first time. Other people that might not be in touch, maybe there's a lot of trauma or there's buildup or they don't meditate or they're not in touch with any of like their sensations or feelings might take 20, 30 minutes or a couple different tries. So everyone's different, man, right? Like that's what we say is, hey, take it, do it for weeks, try it for a few days, try it for several hours. Like everyone's going to find two or three that they love and they're not going to like, you know, one or two of them as much. So that's fine. Like, we just want you to choose the ones that help you the most. Can I'm so excited, man. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Can you do all five at once to see what happens? Can you get like, yourself a big uh, map shit all at once? No, we are, we are working on blends, to be honest. We yeah. are working on like, little, like a finely crafted yeah. like Manhattan. Like a like capsule. Right. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. Nothing. yeah. A like multi origin cologne. coffee. <laughs> yeah. An, emo- <laughs> an emotional. A little bit of Ethiopia, a little bit of Colombia. <laughs> oh, I forgot. You guys just made me think of another thing. So the, this necklace isn't just the, this is just like the, think of like the iPhone one, right? Like this is just like the brick that we wanted to go to market with. We're looking at pillow sleeves to help you oh, sleep. Oh, great. We're looking at cha- like an office chair that you can feel it coming throughout, you know, the back. Um, yeah. Ski helmet. Yeah. Other ways that you can use the technology to imprint on your body without having to wear a necklace or a headband around all day. So now that's that interesting. Yeah. And a half away. Yeah. Yeah, because you could take like a sleep pillow, you know, the, like a, the, what they call it, like the, the sack that it's in. You could take yep. that with you anywhere. Couldn't yep. you, yeah, couldn't you take like, could, if you like Travel wove pillow. it, yeah, yeah. If you mm-hmm. wove it into a sort of blanket that you could then Velcro to lots of different things, you know what I mean? Or you could then apply it, to make it a malleable object. Yeah, yeah yoga mats. The, yeah, that's the, mm-hmm. that's the like, back here. of the chair. Scott, I assume you, uh, you have your family man and you have children, yes? Yeah, I do. I've got, Have you uh, let your children actually play with this device? Uh, <laughs> I actually, these are my kiddos. Oh, this is sweet. <laughs> uh, what what yeah. ages are they, Scott? Three and one. And then here's my wife right here, Amy. So we got a sweet. We got She's a hottie. She's a sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, I love her. Three, third one on the way in June. Um, she's pregnant well, right now. It hasn't affected your fertility. Oh, congratulations, man. Yeah, yeah uh, oh, but she's, she's not wearing the signal. She wore the signal a lot before we got pregnant. She got pregnant, uh, but now she's pregnant, and you know we doesn't we haven't done all the studies on pregnancy. So we're like, if you're pregnant, we're just hey, we, don't, we don't know, but just yeah. But, but you're, al- you're alive, kids. Do your alive kids interact? The the ones that uh, have shown up. <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, nice, they, good. Yeah, they're cute kids. They're they're crazy, but they're fun. I mean, you guys have kids. I have two kids. Byron has uh, a couple to, to yeah, himself. Yeah, I got a ten-year-old yeah. and a one and a half-year-old. All right, and, and I've got a, a second, a thirty-two-year-old over here. <laughs> I've got no legitimate ones, Scott. I mean, there might be none that he knows of. Yeah, <laughs> there might be a few peppered around the globe. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, nice one, man. Thanks very much for chatting to us. Yeah, it's been a pleasure having you yeah, on, Scott, man. and we look forward to, to trying out the product. Yeah, 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 we definitely will. And, the launch, and it's launching sometime in July, so this episode will probably be out before then. I would yeah, think. Well, we're actually going to market end of May, early June. So we'll try to get you guys as soon as possible. Then we'll ship them over. Cool. Can't wait. Um, Excellent. Absolutely, nice man. Scott, thank you so much. Thanks for choosing to do companies that make a difference. I think that's something that helps yeah. Europe. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We're, we're still on Indiegogo, so if people want to get them, they just go to um, happy.com slash go. Um, and then they can go grab one and reserve their spot. So yeah, they're still open. Exactly. I see. That's why I'm an amateur podcast. I didn't ask you where people can find you. So like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Were we supposed to do some sort of um, thing like 10% off or some shit with Biome in the last episode? No, no. So we can do, no, no, no. The discount code. Yeah, you were nothing like that. No, all right. Okay, never mind. We're, okay. we're all good. Do you guys have sponsors yet? Do you have sponsors yet where you can butcher their ads? Because that's, that's what we're trying to do. Right. So if you that's, that's the attempt. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, I hope well, you just, product, just sponsor. We'll sponsor you. Your our name. Okay, you got it. Happy. You got it, man. You got it. <laughs> This company is Scott. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Nice one. Nice one. Put Scott. the fork down. Yeah. <laughs> All I can hear is this distant. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to mimic yeah, LSD. <laughs> this will make you feel annoyed. <laughs> There's a new signal, Scott. I've just invented annoyed. one. Annoyed. <laughs> what is yeah. that? Mildly irritated. <laughs> yeah. Put that on there, man. All right. Good choice. All right, Scott. Nice, <laughs> Scott, nice, nice thank you. you so much. Thanks for your time. Take Thanks, care. Scott. Thanks, Take care. Bye. Ciao. Well, oh. that was interesting. Oh, you want to cut up? I, I need, guess he must have. I need to do he wants to show off his legs. That's, That's what he wants to do. We all, we all wanted to show off his legs. Um. <laughs> At some point, Tom, Rob will return. <laughs> we can carry on. We can carry on. Hey, actually, that went uh, way better than good. I thought thought that was actually. good i think yeah. he, he kind of i mean i you know i've definitely watched all those troll videos and had a very healthy amount of skepticism yeah well that's why i wanted to play devil's advocate on it because i think there was a lot of questions i had after watching those videos watching the all the all the biohacker events that everyone was endorsing it mm. and i was like I don't know. I've got some questions about this thing. I, I'd, I'd want to know because I also, because we do stand for food is medicine and preventative medicine. Yeah. I sort of think, is this just a high tech pill? You know, is this just another mask of not dealing with the real problem? And effectively, I suppose it is, but there is so many people out there that I think could definitely benefit from that product if yeah. it does work. Yeah, definitely. I, I think so too. And I, you know, we I mean, the, the Earth Locker is not a biohacker forum. No. Part, but we are about optimization to be better earthlings. So I kind of feel it fits in, in that category. Totally, yeah. I mean, because if it means you can be a calmer person by using that as a tool and you can be more focused and you can be, you can be more focused on yourself, mm. I think that's, that's really important. And it's definitely in line with what we're trying to put out there. What's yeah. that? Happy? Yeah, in terms of like it not being... It, it, it can be used as a tool to make you a healthier, better person yeah. and, and therefore more focused. And That's the thing. I think if you put the science, it depends on whose hands you put it in. It's so subjective, isn't it? The, the morality, right? you know, like it's a nuclear bomb argument that the, the science is godly. It's amazing. You destroy the whole planet, but it's about whose hands you put it in. I think, yeah. You know, that thing, like I remember my mother used to get a, a real jump in pain in her leg. You know, it just used to be this thing. It would just come around periodically and she'd get this kind of frightful, oh, mad sort of darting pain in her, in her I think in her upper leg. And uh, she got some magnet thing. It was like emitting a frequency. Mm. and uh, It vastly improved the situation. Yeah, it's amazing those things. Like it's, I, I remember the first time I tried uh, this red light therapy thing and it was down in Cape Town in this little booth in this market. and. I'd, I'd been having this, it was when I was training for black sales and we'd been put through this intense training and I ended up getting this, this pain in my knee, relentless pain in my knee and I couldn't get rid of it. I was stretching all the time. And this is before I knew a lot of like certain physio things that I would do now and soft tissue stuff, right? And they, and they said uh, joint pain, um, arthritis, all these different things that will help with these symptoms. And I, was, I went to the guy, I said, what's this light therapy stuff? And he said, well, what pain are you feeling? I said, I've got this pain in my knee. Um, and, I, you know, it's come from an injury. And he was like, yeah, come in here. Five minutes, it'll be gone. And I was like, uh, okay, I can give this a bash. Went in there. Lo and behold, five minutes under this light, I walk out of that booth. The knee pain had completely gone. Yeah. And that was the first time, I think, that I saw this new technology, this like fad technology of something like a red light or... Mm. Yeah, frequency just, stuff. Yeah. Thinking, have, have, oh my have, god, it works! Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, what, we we actually bought one of those at our house. What are they? What are what are they emitting? This red light is it infrared? I don't um, know if it is infrared, right? You know, Byron, it, you've got it, one. It's near infrared and infrared, so it's a, it's several different spectrums that actually penetrate into your body, into your soft tissue, stimulating cell growth and wow. autophagy and everything else. And it's kind of phenomenal. Yeah, I've got to get one of those things. Where do you get that from? Uh, I bought mine from Platinum, and I know, like, uh, I think it's Juve is the other company 
And, so, and and is it a full body one? Is it half body? Is it? Uh, it's a, it, yeah, it's a meter or so long. Okay. With, you know, the back of the bathroom door. Because, of course, it's something you should do naked and, and all that good stuff. Oh, yeah. So and, how, 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 <laughs> how, um, how frequently and for how long do you uh, parade tw- nude? In 20 front of minutes. Um, I do it maybe. Depends on my needs and time. So a couple times a week. Amanda does it more than that because she's, tr- she's working on her thyroid condition with it. And do you, did, has she seen the difference? Have you seen the difference? With yeah, she's it? done a lot of uh, uh, red light therapy at different clinics and things like that. It's, it's been really powerful. Mm. Really, really powerful. Really? I'd be very interested in that, yeah. Crikey. i tell you one thing, right? I had a, a, there was a fella on the edge of my town growing up. And my mother brought me to him once because I had a Veruca on the sole of my foot. And, How's a Veruca? Uh, like a Veruca salt? A Veruca, a Veruca is like a wart. Like a wart. Contagious mm nasty little devil who usually affects you on the sole of your foot and uh i went out there and he he sat me in the garden and he got some leaves off of a tree which i later learned was a willow tree and then we all sort of focused our energy together on the veruca and we all said a prayer or whatever and then he he rubbed these leaves into the veruca and I thought, God, this, and it was gone. It was gone like t- two, three days later. And usually if you go to a pharmacy, they give you something to freeze or burn it off or freeze, burn it off. Yeah. And it's deeply painful and Wait, it who, often doesn't work. Who's, right? who's yeah, it just comes back. Mom's idea or... My mother just knew that this guy could cure these small things. But I later found out that it was uh, a complete hoax. No, <laughs> but I later found out that the leaves were from the willow tree, which when the willow tree is being attacked, it creates salicylic acid, which is what kills verrucas. <laughs> and so wow. if, if a willow tree is being eaten by something, it'll go, yeah. and it'll, cre- it'll make its leaves all bitter. Yeah. And so he, he broke the thing. We said the prayer, and he went back to the leaves after they'd created the acid, and then, and then rubbed it all over the... Oh, my God. Veruca. That's 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 someone, that's someone listening to this with a veruca that's went, I've got a bloody willow tree in my garden. Get on it. Just get on it. Go out and hit it with a stick and wait five minutes. You know, that's something I would like to do as one of our podcasts is talk. I think it's Stephen Gundry who has a plant paradox. Is that his book? Um, oh, talks, yeah, yeah. Where he talks about plants' natural defenses and how certain plants are, well, oh. based, most plants on the earth are actually out here to kill us. Ama- so <laughs> that's why we don't eat everything around. Exactly. Yeah. But that's, it's amazing, um, that book, The Secret Life of Trees, because that's what made me think of that mm. memory when I read about the salicylic acid in this German guy, Peter Wollheben's book, The Secret Life of Trees, which was a big one recently. It was on all the main shelves and stuff around mm-hmm. the bookshops because it was a very kind of layman's uh, walk through the forest, through Peter Wollheben's eyes. And it comes into that type of stuff, loads like tree defenses, like there are trees. They saw, they observed um, giraffes on the Serengeti eating this species of tree. And then suddenly they would all just stop eating it and then they would go to another tree, always upwind of the previous tree. And they go, what the fuck is going on here with these giraffes? And then they realized that the tree went, ah, bollocks to you giraffes, and created bitterness in its leaves that was disgusting to the giraffes. And it also sent out a signal that went with the wind to tell all the other trees to manufacture the signal because there's predators in the area. So the, the giraffes knew this and would go upwind of the tree because that they knew where the juicy leaves were. There is That's so mad. much weird crap in the world. <laughs> there really is. There's so much sort of complexity to stuff. And I yeah, think, we just, we are so blinded yeah, by, kind of, by how much knowledge and intelligence there is yeah. in everything. Or the fact that... Uh, well, people will go through their whole life never knowing that. And yeah, they're surrounded by trees every day. That they can do this, this tree consciousness. You know, this, there are these massive, what they call wood wide web, which is one single fungal organism mm-hmm. that exists under old forests that connects them all like a, an internet, but better than an internet, mm. it can actually send nutrients like to trees that are in trouble or have been beaten up by predators or weather or whatever else. It can actually be supported by its fellow species trees under the earth with a partner organism. Yeah. It's not different than a microbiome. Exactly a bit thing. like a microbiome. Yeah. Actually, my mate yeah. pointed out recently, we went and um, explored Epping Forest, which was mm. amazing. It's yeah, I know Epping London, Forest, yeah. It's just on London's doorstep. You know, it's on the, uh, the central line. And we were up there and he goes, check out, man. 
your lungs are just an upside down tree. <laughs> but it's nice, you know, when you look at the, the cross section of a lung. Ultimate stoner statements right there. Yeah. You no, know, we were we were <laughs> they were sober, can you believe? But we were um uh but it's true that if you look at the cross section of a lung, that it kind of the bronchioles look like branches and yeah. small branches and leaves yeah. and stuff. And it's just we're in such symbiosis with them, you know. Yeah, it's true. I've got trees outside my window here. I'm just looking at them. You're so right. They really do just look like an upside down lung. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, you know. Weird. Never noticed that. I like this. All right. We have the pondering moment of our podcast. Pondering. 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 Yeah, it's interesting to kind of go back and think about other times that you've been cured by things that essentially, like it's mad, you know, the, the Wim Hof breathing technique, the breathing technique that where you hyperventilate, Wim Hof has popularized it. Uh, before I had that, when I was a kid or whatever, I used to, you know, fairly, fairly periodically, I would get uh, um, sort of glands that would have swollen a bit if I was run down. And I'd be like, oh, right now I have to go to the doctors. I have to get a prescription. I have to take pills for whatever, 10 days. Uh, and, and unknowing, completely, clear, like not completely clear out my microbiome, but do it great damage, my gut flora. And, uh, but now with, if I feel any kind of gland swelling coming on, I just make sure to do the breathing technique, maybe mm. once in the morning, once at lunch, once in the morning, once at lunch, and then it's gone. Yeah. yeah. You know, the thing is what's amazing about that stuff. And like, it's the same with, you know, once you know certain things about how to tune in your own diet to help with prevention of illness is that it feels like you've discovered some magic pill, yeah, right? Yeah, it feels yeah. like you're like, oh my God, it's incredible. When actually it's the thing that we should be turning to first. Yeah. And instead it's become, the society's become this thing that the first thing you do is you go to a doctor who will give you a pill that yeah. is actually going to give you an onset of other problems. You hand your power away, don't you? Yeah, immediately. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You hand your power away. And that's scary, man. I mean, it's even, it's even scary when you have kids as well, because like you, you go to these people who you're trusting with your child's life and their wellness. And you just don't know what you're giving them. And you sort of, you know, you do feel powerless for want of a better word, because you, yeah. and you, and that's why I think I wanted to do this and do more yeah. research into everything. Cause I want to take the power back. Cause you, yeah. that's why you bullied us into doing this podcast. Didn't yeah, you? I know. It's like, you will do it with me. I can't <laughs> do it on my own. I don't know the tech. <laughs> he can be very intimidating viewers and <laughs> even on zoom chat <laughs> yes he's oh, an iron yeah. will i'd like to try that red light thing can i come around and parade yeah i want to give it back we should do a live podcast from us all doing a red light therapy yeah, yeah. House, Byron. in my bedroom i will clean it <laughs> Just dancing, dancing, <laughs> yeah we're gonna try that we should try stuff though we should we could, could we bring that around yeah, we could That'd be really interesting. And just maybe, would it be interesting to kind of have it on for maybe the 20, like Well, we can hour? actually go to a, one of these uh, holistic, bulletproof -y kind of clinics. Like uh, there's a few of them that have a clear spring, I think is the one, the, a red light. Well, we there. should reach out to them and see if we can come and do an episode. And there'll, be some, the there'll be some field trips in our future on this podcast. Yeah. For sure. We should do more field trips. I like yeah. field trips. Well, we can't do a field trip. We're yeah. I've lived them since yeah. school. Stay, home. Home. Stay safe. Stay safe. Protect yeah. our NHS. I've got a theory, you know, about the whole, the fact that this whole country has been very quickly, quickly plastered with the words protect our NHS, which I think mm. ultimately great for everyone. Yeah. We're also... Uh, guarantees you'd imagine going forward that the thing We're not that privatize pulled it. us out of, or at least uh, you know, was the was the instrumental thing in helping us to avoid hundreds of thousands of deaths, cannot be on the table in some trade agreement. It's it's been it's been exalted by this repetitious language, which I think has been done intentionally by the government, so that. Because the, what do the Tories want? They want to get re-elected all the time. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They want to do something and they didn't want the NHS to be, they mustn't have wanted it to be on the table for a future uh, health deal with the US. I don't know much more. Wait, are you saying that the Liberals and Jeremy Corbyn actually started the coronavirus? <gasps> <Just saying yes. laughs> Is that what you're saying? You even going on about trolls earlier. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. Um, <laughs> you stay out of my microbiome, you inflammatory div uh, divil, you. Okay, now we, we touched on slightly with the uh, Richard Simmons. Uh, what's, what's the deal with your hat, man? 
This hat, I'll have you know, I was walking in the, you know, the spirit of reduce, reuse, recycle. <laughs> or if I'm a main bollocks who sees something that he likes. Uh, I just picked it up off the street and it did have quite a bit of gack going on in it. Oh. <laughs> it was a sort of a yellow pool of something going on around. The oh, pool. God. So some old windling aerobics instructor had postulated into it and yeah. Yeah. discarded on the street and you picked it up. <laughs> yeah. I came along with my prongs. <laughs> Aha! Another free item of clothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. If anyone's listening out there, we need Ooh. more fashion sponsors. Actually, yeah, or here, check this out. Talking about dumpster diving, check this out. Where's he off? I don't know. For, for our listeners, he's, for our uh, listeners, he's gone off to his patio to get us the more diving of the dumpster. Hello, what's he got? He's brought in what looks like Look at this some ornaments. Oh, a little bronze metal bird bath. Chris, get the old thing thingamajigger on that. Now, for, for folks listening, Right, I found this beautiful ornate sculpture bird bat right next to the bins by Tesco. This was pretty <laughs> awesome. Can heck? you believe it's that? People. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Fire and goes, and then all you need to do is... Right? Is it broken though? No, 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 no it's supposed to be that way. You lift it up and I it's pointed out to him that's supposed to have a pump in it. It's so a, who's, who's thrown it? that out? Some twit. Some well, maybe it's, it's cursed and somebody, you know, <laughs> had to get rid of it because their life was a shambles. Ooh. And these, you brought it into your house now, mate. Well, that's what you do when you're, when you're bringing in crap off the street into your house. Yeah. <laughs> you're inviting yeah. curses. That's the least of your problems. You've got a, a hat that's been peed in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or hopefully it's pee. I mean, it's not some sort of burst abscess in Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Lord on, Byron. On that note, guys. Actually, another oh. another tip in the spirit of reduce, reuse, recycle, which is another we might get a giggle out of, is uh, my neighbour um, described the great benefits of pouring diluted urine onto your compost in the bin. Like if you have a compost bin, you can uh, you know pee in a bottle and then okay. fill the rest. All up. right, lovely story. And let's put this in context. I walk in today to our lovely recording session today. And he points out, look at that bottle, a little water bottle in the corner. See, what do you think's in it? I'm like, please don't tell me it's urine. <laughs> it, was by the, it was by the front door, so I didn't forget about it. And I, uh, that's what was in it. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. Oh, why? <laughs> See, you know, some of us truly care. Yeah, you know, enough to put our vanity to one side. And For the compost. It's a slippery slope, though. Byron recommended I drink it next. Yeah. Byron <laughs> says that Mahatma Gandhi used to do it for health purposes. I think that's true. <laughs> I, I know you can drink your own urine to uh, retake in electrolytes and stuff. I think well, electrolytes, and there's certain... something about the hormonal things that come through your urine that actually can heal you somehow. I, I remember hearing something about that. Yeah, I've seen something like that before. Wow. Uh, we'd have to get a urine expert on. We will on not to... be doing this on the podcast. Just no. So you know. Well, we could get someone on to talk about it, though. That would be interesting. Yeah, I'd be interested to know about that. It's you know, like, if you're ever in that situation like, where you're like, can yeah. I, if I need to? Yeah, of course you, you know, of course you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There we go. So, yeah, let's wrap this up, Byron. <laughs> but the thing, I mean, you know, t thirst, thirst is, a, she's a mortal mistress. I mean, <laughs> if you were out there in the middle of the Sahara. Oh, yeah. Deeply dehydrated. They say that if it gets to a certain point and you're so dehydrated, because if your urine gets to a point where it's so depleted that it, it becomes like toxic to yeah. drink it, oh, I guess. Yeah. So it comes out like snot. judging that balance when you're dehydrated in the desert. Dehydration, when it comes out like snot. Yeah. <laughs> like, that was uh, <laughs> maybe that's a little bit past the sell by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's now become a kind of a chutney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, it looks a bit fermented, doesn't it? <laughs> Ooh, I've just had deja vu. Well, you know then, guys, if you would like this lovely discussion on mm. all your bodily functions, please like this video. Yeah, do subscribe yeah. and like this video for Christ's sake. And tell your friends and get your and just let us know if somebody you Ooh. know is actually involved in this uh, urine tradition. And yeah. also tell us in the comments 
you know, any kind of improvements you've made in your life through diet or through spirituality. Oh, yeah. yeah, we want to hear about them. Yeah, just, just stick up some testimonials. You know? And tell us anything you want us to chat about because yeah. Yeah. and uh, anyone you think we should get on and uh, we'll talk to them because we want to ask the questions for you. Do you know who would be a dream one? Mm. Uh, Dr. Robert Lanza. He's quite fascinating. Oh, yeah. He's fascinating. Who's he? He's, he is a guy who, when he was a teenager, he went into Harvard and they admitted him early because he was such a clever clogs, because he managed to show all of the stages and proof of, of how he genetically modified chickens in his backyard, I believe. Right? It's something like, like that, yeah. He's like 14 or 15 years old. They think that the movie Goodwill Hunting is, uh, exactly. is based on him hmm. because he... He had this big career quite early at Harvard, and then, but now and then he became the foremost mind on stem cell research. And to look at the guy, the guy which is, I've had, by the way, I've had stem cells. Oh yeah, so, talk about yeah, that. It, which is actually some someone we need to get on is uh, a, a company I went through is a company called Regenex, um, which are an amazing company. They're they're at the forefront of of stem cell treatments, for yeah. orthopedics. Uh, a guy called Doctor Centeno from Regenex, we need to get him on. But yeah, I went through those guys and I, I healed uh, two herniated discs and a grade three hamstring tear with stem cells. Wow. Um, so it's, it's, for me, the future of orthopedic yeah. stem cells. Because wow. um, with my own stem cells, so they take the bone marrow from your, your hip, from a hip bone marrow draw, mm. They take the stem cells from that bone marrow and then they inject the stem cells into the injured area. Oh. And you basically heal yourself. Right. And then the cells it's behave amazing. like the cells that they're surrounded by. Isn't that the way cells yeah. behave? That's yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. So it, it ignites yeah. the stem cells and they then go to work. So it becomes like a baby. Think of it like a brand, a brand new baby cell. So you have to be very careful with it for the first few weeks of the development. So I couldn't really work out or anything. I had to be very careful because it's so delicate. But I woke up one morning a few weeks after having the, the procedure and had this searing pain for like the last year and a half from the, the herniated disc in my back all the way down my leg, like a sciatic pain. Um, mm. And I woke up one morning and it was gone. And it was literally like the MRI. I just went and had a, a post MRI done and it just shrunk down. It had come off the nerve completely. Wow. It had healed itself. Unbelievable. And Maybe. people go and get surgery for that and snip the disc off they literally weaken their spine oh and that's that's God. the go-to thing to do whereas actually there is an alternative wow. right there yeah well check this out robert lanza to look at him he's in his mid-60s i believe but he's hauntingly young mm. like he swear to god he looks 30 he looks 35 mm. like me you mean haunting yeah young. well yeah yeah, yeah you're exactly the same part <laughs> yeah i'm 50, first, so. just... <laughs> i look like i'm 21 i know of course <laughs> it's the dungarees they down age you <laughs> also he, he, <laughs> bathes, like a he bathes in donkey milk for some reason <laughs> yeah um but lanza has a new unifying theory out called biocentrism and i am slightly ransacking another podcast here but that's why it would be a coup to get him on to get it straight from the horse's mouth 100 percent. because it's all about the under the comprehension of the universe has to begin with not the subject but the experiencer of the subject mm -hmm. you know essentially the consciousness that is witnessing all of this external fun stuff, like, you know, my, uh, my bin and my laundry hamper, et cetera. All, instead of looking at that, look at the biology of the consciousness that's experiencing it. Yeah. You know, and all of this came as a result of investigating quantum mechanics and how, you know, the, the, the universe seems to behave differently under scientific observation and not at all. Mm. And so, He's basically saying that we create our universes, do you know what I mean? Which we do, you know, but he's, he's doing it through a clever clogs unifying theory way. So he'd yeah. get him on. He'd be yeah, a goodie, yeah. Oh yeah. Quantum is, is the old microbiome term, I think, <laughs> on some levels, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you know what's mad? I was listening to another thing recently you were saying about, you know, it was uh, the great mathematician. Oh, brain. That's the name, oh, brain? No, the fellow Schrodinger. Schrodinger, who created, oh, yeah. he created a thought experiment, which involves a cat in a box, right? And basically he, he created, do you know that Schrodinger's cat? Have you heard this? Mm -hmm. Basically, the, the experiment is 
if you put a cat inside of a box, right, and then there is a, there's a, a, a chemical reaction, which means that this particular electron gets released in the box, which could mean that the cat is dead or alive, right? But because the cat is in a box unobserved, the, the Schrodinger argues that the cat is both dead and alive, do you know what I mean? In the realities of the person who's writing down the maths or whatever else. But it was a kind of a thought experiment to show his unease with quantum mathematics because he was the one who came up with the formula that, that requires the universe to be really weird and really anti-Newtonian in order for all of the maths that our civilization sits upon to work. And so for the last hundred years, mathematicians have basically been going, just leave it alone. It works. Just leave it alone. Mm. It works. Just leave it alone. But now wow. gone, we have to investigate why the maths is this way. How can it be this way? The universe has to reflect it. And so now they've started to do all these different tests. Like, well, I've been asking that since I was like 14 going, yeah, but why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why is it that? And interestingly, like Naveen Jain said to us, he said, experts will move a field along a little bit within the parameters of you don't ask that and you don't go near that and you don't ask that. And it takes an ignoramus like us, well, <laughs> two, I can't quite put you in that bracket, Thomas, uh, to then to sort of move the field along kind of, because I think people get into, in, in academic circles, they get into places where they go, we can't ask that question. We do not ask that question. Yeah. yeah. No, it builds up this weird culture of restriction. Yeah. It does, yeah. And I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it happens in all the things. Well, I, I believe that change yeah. doesn't happen unless you ask those questions. That's the thing. We don't develop, we don't evolve unless yeah. those, you, you need the people that ask the questions. And that's what interests me the most about like functional medicine and, and all those kind of things because we, we, people are so stuck on, oh, well, we just do this. There's mm -hmm. a problem, we just do that. And surely there, there is another way. And, that's, yeah. that's, and you only get progression by asking the questions. Think about, think about if we still had the Aborigine nation's technology on dreams. Yeah. You know? Think about yeah. if we still had all that. You know, I mean, I'm sure there are probably um, there's some retained in the culture. But there's, you know, there's things, there are different technologies that have been swept away in the interest of empire and whatever else um, that we have lost. You know, things yeah. that are kind of bobbing back up to the surface and in the in the areas of esoteric science and i think then you know us twits come along and poke those people and kind of try and popularize yeah, their ideas try to make it a little simple for us yeah yeah, yeah. guys shall we uh, shall we call it let's put wrap a, it put up a thought in it because we will uh, chit chat a little later we'll chit chat more later thank you don't yeah nice one thanks well, guys listen like and subscribe this podcast right because if you don't we're going to come around your house and uh, all the like, all the rotten veg that Sainsbury's and Tesco leave around the back, we're just gonna we're just gonna like tomato, old mangoes, you know, like like proper like. What was in your smoothie? Something bananas. Magnum? A mighty mango. <laughs> yeah, and, and a hat. Banana <laughs> that mighty bush. This banana has got tarantula eggs in it. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna smash your house with that. No, we're not really. But do do uh, subscribe to the podcast. Okay. Yeah, and we'll keep doing it. The Earth Locker is produced by Fire Knight, edited by Luna Wolf of DisturbiaFilms.com and the multi-talented Storm Stewart. Director of photography is Christoph Asok. Assistant producer is Amanda Taylor. Design and marketing by Alice Vandy, with a big thanks for technical support from The Flow State Production. This podcast represents the opinions of the hosts and guests to the show, not the parents or affiliate companies of The Earth Locker. The contents of the show are solely owned by The Earth Locker. This show is for informational purposes only. And because each person is so unique, please consult your healthcare professional for any medical questions. For that matter, talk with your financial advisor, especially if you wish to invest in this podcast. And don't forget, speak with your elders about personal and spiritual matters. They know stuff. They've been around for a while. <laughs>